All right. Hey guys, I'm Tiffany with Wise Skies. And uh, if you're new to the channel, I'm doing free tarot readings every Friday. Um, we start with Aries and we go all the way through Pisces. Um, and so it's just a general reading for everybody. And so if you're watching for your sun sign, right? If you were born in the sign of Scorpio, then you're watching for your sun sign. You can also watch for your moon sign or your rising sign. So let's just jump in. And hi, Melissa. Great to see you here. Thank you. Happy Friday. Happy Beltane, everyone. Um, as we're getting going here, some of you guys may want to check out the May forecast. So the forecast and the podcast are out. May is a nine month in numerology. It's We might be feeling a sense of urgency. Uh, we might be feeling a sense of uh, expectations, you know, like the energy is building with a nine. And so then in June, it'll shift to a one and things will feel a whole lot different. But as we're going into May, we've got three, four planets going retrograde. Um, one of them is Venus. And so we did a very special podcast about Venus retrograde in the sign of Gemini. This is going down while the nodes are shifting signs. So I'm trying to paint the picture here. So as we do the readings, you get a general feel for the cosmic uh, energy, right? So what does it mean? The North Node and the South Node are tied together. So when one changes signs, so does the other. And we were shifting the nodal axis from, axis from um, Capricorn and Cancer into Gemini and Sagittarius. All right, so the nodes are going to shift and then Venus is going to retrograde and into the sign of Gemini. So I think that a lot of us are going to be feeling pulled in two directions with this shift, um, but that's just part of the picture. The nodes change sign every year, year and a half or so, and Venus usually only stays in a sign for a month or a month and a half. She's going to be in Gemini for four months this year. That's a really long time for Venus to be in Gemini and to be retrograde. So um, there's a special podcast and a special forecast article at wiseskiesadvice.com if you want to geek out on the Venus retrograde um, info. My friend Sasha at Astrology Mothership helped put a lot of that together. So big kudos to her. Thank you, Sasha. And I love collaborating with her. Definitely check her channel out. Um, what else can I tell you about May? The, we have a, a survival guide in the shop. It's eight dollars. So if you know your, if you know where Gemini is in your chart, what house uh, it's in, then that's a great little kit for anybody that wants to dive a little bit deeper. And there's also the freebie sheet, the houses freebie sheet at wiseguysadvice.com. So I think that's all the housekeeping. And uh, looks like we got some folks in the house. Elodie, hi. Um, Yahira, hi. Taurus in the house. Happy Beltane. Thank you, Leanne. Hey, Rissa and Teresa. Awesome. All right. So as we're getting going, this is what uh, this is what came out for our general reading. You like that general reading? <laughs> um, the Seven of Wands. So this is when we feel like we're kind of doing it alone, right? This makes a lot of sense. We're, a lot of us are in isolation, but it's kind of that feeling of us against the world. And that can be an example of this Venus and Gemini, this feeling pulled. Uh, so anytime you're challenged that brings you to a place of division, uh, I would encourage you to see what's up with your unity. How can you get an alignment instead of division? So it's in the contrast, as Esther Hicks would teach, that we kind of find out what we really want. So it's okay to feel pulled and us against the world or we're not feeling supported. As long as it's done with the vision of coming into unity, we get the world here. So even though I have this, you know, it's a cruel, cruel summer going on with my newsletter and everything, it is, there's a lot, it's a heavy situation, right? We have all summer that Venus is in retrograde in Gemini, so until August. But even though this like isolation thing is happening, this is actually in our best interest. So if we can start remembering that life is happening for us, not to us, that's going to be a huge, huge, uh, important piece of our energy as we go collectively forward. So, all right, let's jump in with Aries. That was more than I meant to say. Thanks for your patience. I also want to give Aries a little extra love because I feel like usually they're the first and I'm still kind of orienting myself. Um, you know, you never know what's going to happen in the the live readings, right? So I, uh, it's not like I can plan for what is going to come out of my mouth, right? It's just from practice and looking at the cards over and over and reading for people and getting feedback. 
So I appreciate your feedback and let's check out what's going on for Aries. We'll set the intention that everybody gets a little piece of advice and practical information they can use. Um, remembering that this is just entertainment. This is just fun. We're playing with tarot cards and um, you were born wise, you know the answers. So if this conjures something in you to make a change, then great. And follow your heart, right? So Aries, clearing for Aries, clearing for Aries. What do they need to hear? Oh, I was trying to get it so you could see, but maybe you can't. All right, Ace of Cups and Ten of Cups. Wow, that's the dream, Aries. All right, so Ace of Cups, this is new love coming in. All right, and this can be renewed love given the Venus retrograde situation. So either uh, falling in love with life all over again, this could be a significant partner coming in, this could be uh, remembering some things that you liked about your significant partner, this could be you guys going forward um, in a new way, right? Very handsy today. And then the Ten of Cups, right? That's the best love card in the whole deck. So Aries, for your weekend fun, focus on your love, your significant partner falling in love, being in love, um, and just, you know, let yourself off the hook. Like I would say, no extra work, no extra stress, no extra toiling, you know, anything you can do to get in the Cups vibe. So the Cups are all emotions and love and um, tenderness and compassion, uh, creativity, you know, art, the feminine receiving side of things. So, you know, set yourself up with food for the weekend so that you don't have to do a whole lot about it. If you can do any food prep like today so that you can kind of relax and chill, uh, find a new park that you want to hang out in if it's safe where you are, that those type of things. I did pull an extra card and it says walk away and don't look back. So I would interpret this uh, as like walk away from anything that's stressing you out and just focus on what's feeling good, what's most loving for you this weekend, Aries. And then for our um, bonus card, I guess, I, I'm using the Ascended Masters deck. So what Ascended Master could Aries benefit from today, this weekend? <clears throat> okay, oopsie, I pulled two. Uh, <laughs> all right, so the first one was Saint Germain. So work in your magic, Aries. You have a special kind of magic. You have special pioneering energy. You know, you have a very commanding force. Uh, you are a force of nature. You have the fire energy. And today's Beltane, it's a fiery kind of um, frequency out there. So Saint Germain, also Jesus, okay, says open your heart to love. That's the very same message we got in the Chiro, so thank you. And let's move on to Taurus. It does look like I'm getting your messages a lot easier. Hi, Deb. Hi, Ingrid. Hi, Marilyn and Andres. Oh, I love the Ascended Masters deck, too, and I forget about it because I geek out on these all the time. So anybody wanting that one, this is what it looks like, the Ascended Masters. So let's move to Taurus. It's clear for Taurus. Clearing for Taurus. We're doing Taurus right now, guys, and let's get some practical information for our Taurus friends. What do they need to hear? Taurus sun, Taurus moon, Taurus rising. Anybody cross-watching for Taurus? Let's see what advice the Taurus needs. Okay. The devil. The six of swords. And the wheel of fortune. All right. So I would say, and the magician. Um... I would say that there's some major life lessons going on here. That's three major arcana. So this isn't a small issue that the Taurus are leaning into this weekend. This isn't a light and fun reading. Aries was. Yay for Aries. Taurus, you guys, maybe some of you are obsessing about something. Uh, when I get the devil card in my personal readings, usually it's sex or money. Um, usually it's something that you cannot stop thinking about. So Taurus, if you, you know, the one of the um, bad behaviors of Taurus is being very stubborn. Um, but that's all fixed signs, you know, so if you find yourself thinking Taurus over and over and over again about something that's really not serving you, right, here's a, a second card indicating your perspective is kind of crummy right now, like you're looking in the wrong direction, and it's creating a problem for you. So what do we need to do about it? Taurus, we need to take a chance, we need to take a risk, 
So here's the Wheel of Fortune card. Um, it's time to kind of get out of your own head and take a risk, do something different. You know, if you're worried, whatever you're worried about, the answer is not to say to be safe and consistent and stable. That's like your preference, right? So they're asking you to get out of your comfort zone. That's how I would read that for us. So getting out of your comfort zone, remembering that you are the magician here, right? You have an equal amount of intuition as all the other signs. You have an equal amount of superpower magic inside of you. And uh, it's just time to employ it, all right? So employ it by doing something out of your comfort zone. And then an ascended master for Taurus. What do they, who do they like to work with? <laughs> okay. Both. Right. So sometimes writing can be your superpower. Your pencil or your pen or your keyboard can act like a wand. And so um, even though like I like to type, sometimes writing it out is really some good medicine for getting it out of your head, out of that crazy making behavior and into the physical realm. So it goes out of the swords, out of the mental realm and into the coins, the physical world, right? And something alchemical happens when you're writing. So I would take that seriously. And let's move to, um, I almost said Mercury. What is it? Aries, Taurus, Gemini, ruled by Mercury. <clears throat> Clearing is up for Mercury. <laughs> For Gemini, clear for Gemini. Guys, my dad got me this new tumbler. Thanks, dad, if you're watching. Clearing for Gemini. One Queen Holloway says, thank you, right on tip. She's a Taurus, she's a faithful viewer. Thank you so much for that positive feedback. And now for Gemini. What do our Geminis need to know or hear? Anastasia says, bless belting to all. Okay. Clearing for Geminis. Y'all, I'm excited to see what Gemini does with this summer. Like, real excited. Okay. The moon. Ten of cups. Five of coins. Judgment. Why am I going? Like, we're... Stop, Tiffany. Stop. <laughs> so the moon... You know, this is a card of delusion. It's a card of illusion. It's a card of the unknown. All right. So Gemini, some of you might be um, feeling that pulse or that pull, like maybe you're operating up here, but you're feeling that pull of two directions. And you maybe some of you are kind of looking more into the occult or the shadow side or the darker um, emotions, you know, might be coming up for review. And so that's okay. It's like this is a permission card to go there. It's also a card we get very similar to the hanged man when um, we don't have all the information that we need right now. We don't have the full illumination. Uh, life Enough of life hasn't happened. It's not that we don't know or we're not intuitive. It's that the story hasn't played out. So we don't have all the pieces we need in order to move forward. Um, it can mean that you're, you're delusional. It could mean that you're fooling yourself. Um, but those are some possible interpretations, right? So being careful, Gemini, because here's the Ten of Cups. Here's the happiest love. Like some of you might have some rose-colored glasses on and be thinking everything's fine, but maybe there's more to the story that we need to kind of explore. And we know that Venus is going to retrograde in your sign. So we know that you're going to have some things to review and go over this summer. You know, that you might have some past lovers come back up into your life, or you might be reconsidering your current um, situation, you know, with your partner. This is about love. So more is to, more to be revealed, uh, keeping yourself in reality, not being afraid to kind of go to the darker side of things so that you can explore and heal. It's not like you're going there to make mischief and create drama. You're going there in order to see what's there. You know, uh, so this kind of idea of alignment and finding your yin and your yang, uh, this is a good sign for you guys. It's a good reminder because it's real easy to get spread yourself too thin in one area. And so finding alignment with your head and your heart, Gemini. And then we've got the five of coins in judgment. So I think some of you might be uh, experiencing some self-judgment around your finances. And uh, for that, you can, you're can you the only one that can let yourself off the hook. So if you know that you're doing your level best, then it's time to let yourself off the hook for that, okay? 
um, this is just a phase. Everything is temporary. Nothing will last. And the way that you can kind of dig yourself out of some of this anguish or stress really is to make sure that you are doing your level best. Is your budget in order? Are your taxes filed? Have you, can you, uh, what is the energy that you put towards money? You know, do you get up and take care of it and everything's clean in your money house? Or are you not really sure what's going on? Or are you not really clear on how your income is coming and that's stressing you out like that, those type of things. So just getting clear and clean with your relationship with money, knowing that more will be revealed and that we don't have all the pieces right now and being comfortable in that illusion delusion uh, side of both sun and shadow. Okay. So we are, Teresa says, oh my God, this is so me. Which sign are you? And hi, happy Friday, Shelton. Okay, gotcha. Visiting the dark side for healing. I love that too, Laura. <laughs> um, that's where it's at, All right? All right, so for Gemini, what do we need to get? Ascended Masterwise. Freedom. Kina, I don't think I've pulled that one in a long time. She's real pretty. So that's cool, right? Because as the nodes move into Gemini and Sagittarius, right? Like, of course, you're going to want some freedom. You're going to want some independence. That's the Sag side of the pole. It's like the polar opposite of your sun. So you're always kind of needing a little room. You know, you're always needing a little space. So if you haven't taken time for yourself, if you've been over involved, um, then I would suggest that. And tapping into Hina. That's how you say it. I don't know. Um, Jennifer says she's laughing because she's stressing over all her curbside shopping. That's a great interpretation. Those are the kind of things that when we share like this, we can learn the tarot better. You know, we can learn how it applies in our daily lives. Um, Bobby, hi from California. All right, cool. So let's clear now for cancer, clearing for cancer. What do our cancer friends need to hear? Some practical advice or wisdom. Okay, that was easy. So we've got a death and a four of coins. All right, so something is just flat over, you know, and it has to do with your finances. It has to do with the way you think about money. It has to, to, uh, to do with the way that you treat money. So here's another kind of common thread that's weaving its way through the whole zodiac here. It's like, this could be a loss of a job. This could be um, changing um, a job. But if you're, if anything is obscure about money in your life, it's time to get really crystal clear about it. So if you've got um, multiple streams of income, and or maybe you've got like bills going out, and you're not really sure what day, and it doesn't really matter because it's on autopilot or whatever. No, you know, like get put together a spreadsheet, understand what's coming in, understand what's going out. It feels so good. It feels so good. And then and then you'll see the flow start happening. But right now it just feels like money is stagnant for you and that can be very scary. And so, um, you know, cancer has a need for emotional security that kind of looks like physical security. So when they are physically secure, they are then emotionally secure. And so this can just be a sign that, um, you know, we've got to clean up our finances. We have to really understand where they're coming from and where they're going and compartmentalizing what needs to be done. It's kind of like uh, cleaning out your closet, but financially. Hopefully that makes sense to some of you guys. <clears throat> and hi, Magdalena, she's a cancer, awesome. All right, I just ended master for cancers. Lady Nada. So maybe incorporating some mother, wife, sister, daughter type energy. Lady Nada is a, a very determined force. You can kind of see it in that depiction. But maybe exploring who she is and if you want to include her in some of your questing or meditation world. Okay, let's move now to Leo. We'll clear for Leo. Caring for Leo, any Leos watching? 
Okay, jumpers. <laughs> Clearing for Leos, what do our Leo friends need to hear? <clears throat> Thank you, Ellie, you're awesome too. Appreciate it. Clearing for Leo. Just letting the energy settle differently. Whoa. All right. So two knights and a queen here and then a five of coins and then a ten of coins. All right. So I would say that you get it's like it gets worse before it gets better. Here's another money reading. Um, here's two kind of forces that are acting. I keep using the word immature and I really want to change that. I just haven't figured it out yet. So the, these are forces that it's like an internship or um, a starting out place, you know, so having some humility that maybe you don't know everything. Uh, that maybe you don't know how it's going to go. So this is kind of like using the set aside prayer, like God set aside what I think I know about the situation, about this person, about how I'm making money. God set aside what I think I know so that I can be open to a new experience of light, love and divine guidance. You know, that's I'm just ripping off of that. But the set aside, it's just like set aside what I think I know so that uh, divine help can come in. I know that some of you are probably really worried about your money right now or you're uh, possibly like in some codependent behavior type thing. Like maybe you're acting like, um, sorry, all crazy. Maybe you're acting like the mom, you know, maybe you're mothering people, maybe you're smothering people. Maybe you're hoping somebody will mother you. Like that's, that's another interpretation of it uh, with this financial piece. So everybody, uh, the goal here is that everybody is healthy on their own two feet and that they can come together as a healthy partner or a healthy parent or whatever the case may be. But, Whatever you're afraid of financially, if you're spending a lot right now, be careful about that and just know that you're on your way to mastery and that we're going to clean up our act just a little bit here with a little bit of humility. Okay. Not so bad. And then a card of guidance for our Leos. Valerie's a Leo. Hi. Elmoria. Uh clear and shield your energy so maybe some of you leos want to play with that for your meditations okay cool let's go now into virgo so clearing for virgo what virgo friends need to hear for this weekend any virgo is watching sun moon virgo virgo rising let's see what they've got Okay, page of wands. Um, if anybody is interested in learning how I read the tarot, we have a little private group in Wise Guys. It's a private learning group, and sometimes we post in there to help each other learn. You're welcome to join that. Uh, all are welcome. So the page of wands, if you guys uh, follow what how I interpret it, the pages are messages, messages or messengers. And so this is like a text message an email, an idea, an aha, it's something short and like, oh yeah, you know what I mean? It's, uh, and so this is a page of wands. So this is a little message that you're getting to do something differently, to be in action, not to be in thinking land, but to be in physical action. And so Virgos, it's time to change it up a little bit. We've got the strength card and the page of cups. So we've got two messages here, right? We've got one about action and one about um, emotions, you know? So maybe it's, uh, harnessing your emotions in a different way. Maybe it's working through emotions in your physical body. That would be a cool way of interpreting that. And then here's the strength card. You know, you're, you're, I wouldn't say you're being tested necessarily, but you're learning some kind of resiliency that is new to you. All right. It's new to you. It's an, it's a new idea. This idea, this um, consideration to be resilient. And what does that mean? So I would be um, Googling, I would be journaling, what, what does it mean for me to be strong? And I would try to understand that from both emotionally and physically. That's weird. I never know what's going to come out of my mouth. And there's something you, that you're trying to walk away from and you're just processing it. Okay. Um, and it's happening fast. And that's why it's like, whoa. You know, it's like you got this superpower or like when you play video games, I don't know, I'm a child of the 80s and you, you used to get like these blasts where you could go really fast around the cart. It's like that, like that's happening to you, Virgo. 
getting a blast, it's going fast, you're not really sure, and your body and your mind aren't processing at the same time. So, um, you know, the, the trick for that is, to me, comes from heart math. And so heart math offers three solutions for aligning the brain and the heart. Um, and did you know that the heart was made it's in the body before the brain? I thought that was fascinating. But the three things for Virgo that anybody can use uh, start with gratitude, um, non-judgment, and forgiveness. And those three things get us back into alignment immediately. You know, so even if you're faking it, just fake it until the coherency changes. Okay, and a special ascended master for Virgo. Let's see what they've got. Twin flame, Angus. All right. So in light of that Venus retrograde energy, maybe, oh, look, and the flame just went out. That's really weird and witchy. I like it. All right, Virgo, I would pay attention to that. That's a sign from spirit. That didn't happen for no reason. You know what I mean? So um, tapping in, like uh, being willing to discuss an old love that's coming back in, you know, being willing to be open to twin flame energy. Yeah. So Angus is who you want to connect with. That's kind of cool. Um, let me go ahead and move this guy. So after Virgo comes Libra, let's check out what the cosmos have to say for Libra. What are our Libra friends need to hear this weekend? Clear for Libra. Clearing for Libra. Oops. Okay. Also getting the page of cups here. The seven of coins, the fool, queen of swords, the devil. Okay. So this is, we're kind of starting to paint this story here where we're excited about life. You know, we're excited about, we're falling in love with life, but we've got to do it where we're self-sufficient. So we're building some self-sufficiency muscles for our Libras. Um, this means, you know, this is a woman who has planted the seeds of the harvest and she's waiting on the fruit. And you guys know the teaching, you can't get the fruit the day the seed is planted. So you, you have planted some seeds that you're banking on. And this is uh, often a card of faith. So uh, realizing that there's not much to do right now, you know, the watering and the sunlight that's kind of out of your control. You've done your level best to plant the seeds and they're growing, they're sprouting. Something good is happening for you. So why then do we get the fool and the queen of swords? Sorry, <clears throat> the fool, you know, this is a card that warns you, are you being naive? Are you being foolish? Are you being too harsh with somebody? Is somebody being too harsh with you? You know, are you being too harsh with yourself, right? It's very easy for Libra to fall into indecision and to feel foolish and to get kind of taken advantage of or beat up a little bit when it really wasn't necessary. Uh, but I do I do sense that something really has has you bothered, has you buggered up. We got the devil card. Um, this is when we fall into obsessive thinking, you know, and it's hard to get off the wheel. All right. So Libras, you're doing something new about it. You're going to tap into your great faith. That's what you need to do for the weekend. Trust that what you've done is uh, okay, and you know, trust the process that it's unfolding. Trust the unseen. The unseen helpers are there for you. Let's see what else we can get for Libra. <clears throat> can you guys hear me okay? Just want to make sure the volume's good. Now that we're half an hour in, uh, let it go. <laughs> okay. So Quan Yin, another a very similar message as we got in the Tarot for Libra. Let it go, let it go. The seeds have been planted. Let your faith work. Ask Kuan Yin for guidance. Okay, so uh, moving from Libra into Scorpio. Thanks, Elodie, okay. And thank you, Laura. Okay, this is my favorite part of the reading when we get to look at Scorpio. So, Sun, moon, rising. Let's see. Ah, so many things falling up. What does Scorpio need to hear? Some practical advice for the weekend. Just fun. I'm going to shuffle three more times.
Yikes. <laughs> Laura, it's popping. There's a notification popping up telling me that you're in Prague. And I have some cousins that lived in Prague for a while. And one of my biggest regrets is not going to visit uh, when they were there because I felt like I could have had some buddy show me around, you know, they're no longer there. All right, clearing for Scorpio. Okay, I'll stop looking. <laughs> so the Queen of Wands, you know, this is a card that I take as my personal significator. When the Queen of Wands shows up, I know that um, the reading has something to do with me. And I'm a Scorpio, so maybe I'm representing Scorpio Nation for us. But the Queen of Wands, this is somebody who's ready for anything. So I would say for your weekend, a fun way to interpret this is just something light and easy. Uh, have your, have your um, backpack ready for anything. Uh, here in Texas, we're having absolutely beautiful weather. I think, you know, I would have my yoga mat, my swimsuit, my hiking shoes, a uh, light jacket just in case, some snacks ready. Like, this is a sign of going and having fun, right? This isn't a sign of, like, overkill, right? We can, Scorpios can get so intense and so fixed on how it's supposed to go, but this is a sign really of uh, being ready to go, you know, being ready for any occasion. Um, it does look like there's some... Some of us who might be feeling bored or stuck or uh, also kind of in this financial tough situation, the five of coins indicates money going out the window, right? And so uh, we might be kind of worried about that. We might be worried about that in terms of our partnership too, right? So uh, are we in a fair and balanced partnership? Are they working as hard as we are financially? You know, like we're kind of, this is like a skeptical mojo. Um, also behind the two of cups. So we got the queen of wands and the king of wands on either side of this relationship. So Scorpio is out there in a relationship. Maybe you're in a relationship with a fire sign or somebody that acts like a fire sign. This is Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, um, right? Yeah. And uh, so just knowing that maybe sometimes that's good because if you're on the same page, you can go forward and have a lot of fun. But if somebody's holding the other one back or if somebody's ready to go and the other one isn't, it just kind of starts to feel like this energy can clash. So just knowing that, right? And uh, knowing that here's the world card too, like everything's going to be okay. All is well in your kingdom. Uh, things are coming full circle. A new chapter of life is beginning, you know, and how do you want to write it? How do you want to write it? This financial piece uh, resonates with me too. I've done a huge financial cleanup. Feels really good. Feels so good. Um, so, for Scorpio, which ascended master. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Laura. Yeah, Laura, thank you. I will. I would love to come. All right, for Scorpio, let's see here. Whoa, I have definitely never pulled this one. It says go now. <laughs> And that's cool, right? Because that's the same vibe as those queen and king of wands. It's like, go, do, be in action, right? It's Serapis Bay. I've never even heard of that one. I'm totally going to look it up later. Um, okay, so clearing now for Sag. What do our Sagittarius friends need to hear? Any practical advice or wisdom for Sagittarius? Anybody cross-watching for a Sag, Sun, Moon, Sag, Sag Rising? Um and if you guys are just joining in, uh, I encourage you to watch the replay because I went over the overview of May, the astrology and numerology at the beginning. So once we're done here, you can watch the replay and get that. All right, clearing for Sag. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. So marriage, you know, this is the card of marriage. It can be the card of commitment. Um, and here we are again with the queen of wands. So maybe some of you are in a relationship with a queen of wands type of personality. Uh, maybe some of you are needing to exude more queen of wands type energy. You know how the queen of wands is curious, right? Because how can you be both like yang, action, go, and also feminine, you know? I'm watching The Last Kingdom. I don't know if anybody else is watching that. I'm on season four, I'm on the last one, and it is super gory, and it is so not like me. But uh, like, if you, like Brita, she's a she's a queen of wands. 
like she's like both oddly feminine and very much in action with her yang side, right? So Sag, some of you are considering what you're committed to, you know? Uh, are you committed to your own actions? You know, are you, are you, are your feet doing what your mouth is saying type of thing? Like that's one way that you could interpret that. Um, we've also got the Ace of Wands and the King of Coins. Okay, so coming into your full mastery here, this is like coming full circle for you guys. So uh, revisiting, like what did you start? What did you start that you need to end well? What are you committed to it? You know, that's what I would, that's how I would look at that. What did you start that you're looking for a sense of completion? Are you doing the things to get to that sense of completion? So if your goal was to run three miles and you can't even walk a block, are you getting up and walking that block every day? That's a very basic, you know, kind of shitty interpretation, but you get the idea. You know what you started that you want to finish that you haven't done yet, that you're actually very loyal and you're very committed to but we just haven't quite done the things to get there yet. So um, some new habits, you know, that's really all that it takes. Something small, something easy that is sustainable, not some big, huge life changing situation. Um, you know, it does feel like you're, you have some kind of frustration going on. This is like a fight not worth having because nobody wins. So if you feel um, like you're stuck in this nine of wands mode where you're just taking on so much, you know, or maybe you're not taking on anything and that's what feels the weight of the world. It's like either way, whether you're taking on too much or you're not doing anything about it, it just, it feels like real heavy and it feels like this overwhelming sense of why do anything, you know, that's kind of what that feels like. Um, so same thing. It's just like, let's break it down into basic steps. Remember what you're committed to and uh, small steps to move forward with it. <laughs> Deb and Elodie and Melissa are also watching The Last Kingdom. It's like, I really wanted to recommend it, but it's so gory. I feel like I can't do that. Like just with us, like just with our little private party here, we can talk about it, but um, dang, some of that stuff. Okay, clearing for Scorpio. I mean, Sag, so sorry, clearing for Sag. Also Twin Flame. So they got the card of marriage and the twin flame. All right, so Sagittarius, opening your heart to love, it's right there for you. All you have to do is be committed to it. You know, that's all. That's really cool. Are you taking steps in your relationship that are resulting in what you want, all right? So yay, all right. Clear for, who's next? Capricorn, yeah. All right, Barbie, our resident Capricorn is here. Thanks for showing up. Let's see what we can get for our Capricorns for the weekend. Some fun advice, some practical information, a way that they can help. I think Andres is a Capricorn. I'm not sure if he's still watching. Um, any Capricorns that are going to see this later, too, what can we get for them? Clear for Cap. I don't know why I do that. Like sometimes looking away clears the energy somehow. It's like, it, I don't know. So if I do that, that's what's up. Goatfish, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Clear for war caps. Never underestimate a Capricorn. They have very special magic. Melissa, hi. Okay. So the nodes are shifting out of your sign, you know, so you're going to feel different. Like May 5th, I want to say, May 4th, maybe. Things are going to change. It's good. It's been, it's been heavy. It's going to be lighter. So caps, Capricorn. And that's the only way it can be, you know, the rules of nature. Egan's a Capricorn. Cool. We got a lot of caps in the house. Justice. Where can you see it? Uh, three of coins, the devil, the four of wands in the world. Okay. So that's kind of what I was saying, right? 
Um, the justice card, this is about uh, finding that balance between right and wrong, um, kind of a, a humility card too, because this is where we tend to want to, I don't want to say like meddle in other people's business, but sometimes we just think we know what's right and we try to execute that. Sometimes it's, it's from a good place because we want to help somebody, um, but sometimes we're getting in the way of their own, th their karma. So minding your own business, staying on your own mat, staying in your own hula hoop, this is what the justice card is about. I often tell people that the karma police are on it. Uh, you don't have to get in the middle of it. Um, you don't want to take on that karma anyways. You want to let people learn their own lessons at their own pace. Sometimes it's the pace of children. Sometimes it's the pace of snails. Sometimes it's the pace of uh, zebras, you know, and you just you just kind of stay out of it. So this is a card to like mind your own business in a way. Um, it's also a card that feels like maybe something feels unfair. And that's why there's this inner sense of um, wanting to write it. And I'm not saying like, don't stand up for yourself ever, right? I'm just saying, be aware that when the justice card is there, uh, there's some karma involved. So if you, if you decide to attach yourself to a situation or help somebody, right? Or um, let somebody know what you think, just know that it's attached to uh, the karma boomerang. Okay, we got the three of coins. And so this is cool for Capricorns, right? This is the card of your highest art. This is the card of, you're not just chopping wood and carrying water, you're working on something beautiful and magnificent and fantastic and alchemical. And, um, you know, this is like, if you had a drawing, um, now you're gonna go back in and do the fine details. Like you had the bones there, you have your recipe, and now you're fine tuning it into some magical creation, right? This guy is not just building a normal window. He's building the most beautiful, highly functional, delicate, intricate uh, stained glass, right? So that's kind of what you're doing with your work right now. Um, that could be personal work in your heart space. That could be your physical work out in the world, you know, but whatever it is, it's like next level, next level shit. And then the devil, all right. Okay, so you guys are easy. You can obsess about stuff too, right? So we know that. So whatever you're obsessing about, the antidote here is the Four of Wands. And the Four of Wands is about finding stability, force, you know, stable structures within mobility, wands, the action. Um, so how, how can you kind of harness this crazy thinking or the cyclical thinking um, into something a little bit more stable and streamlined for you so that you can access this cool, fun, magical pattern? Uh, you get the world card too. So you are coming to a huge huge completion. Um, this is very symbolic of the nodal shift, the nodes changing out of Capricorn Cancer into Sag and Gemini. And so this is, I think this is really significant. This is a significant shift. I would highly encourage you to study the node shifts um, as a way to explore something a little bit deeper for you guys, Capricorns. All right, um, also indicative of things uh, coming into full circle so that there can be life after death. So a symbol of rebirth for you in some way. Maybe you're bringing back an old product. Uh, maybe you're bringing back an old passion. Um, something like that. Cool. Oh, Melissa, this is perfect. She says that she's finishing up a huge remodel on May 5th. <laughs> nice. Nailed it. And that she's beautifying her home. Venus, right? And uh, that's awesome. That's a really perfect thing. Rissa says that her Taurus rising in moon and oh, Tor she's a Taurus and she's got her rising in moon and Libra and both messages resonated for her. So thank you, Rissa. Glad you're here. Um, all right, we're getting a little extra nudge for our Capricorns. Some celestial guidance. Yes. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Same thing as the, the Libras, right? Kuan Yin, you know. What, what can you let go? Sometimes harder for Capricorns. Sometimes you had a vision for how it was supposed to be. And what if you just changed your mind, you know? What if you just changed your mind? Like, it's a big power. All right, clearing for... Capricorn, and then Aquarius. Aquarius is fixed air. It's a fixed air sign. Saturn is retrograde in Aquarius. 
um, right now in the skies. Let's see what we have in store for our Aquarius that are watching. Okay. Three of Wands. So I, my Aquarius friend stopped by the other day. She was collecting uh, donations for a uh, Mother's Day brunch thing. I don't really know. I mean, it was like a package deal that, uh, that they were going to do and sell. And I had some donations from old cookbooks that I wrote that I'm not selling anymore. And so uh, she stopped by. I gave her a whole bunch of books. And um, that is the power of Aquarius. They are very well networked. Um, they have access, they're kind of like little dragons. They have access to tools and quirky, interesting things that, that they need. I've been setting the intention that I wanted to give those cookbooks away for a long time. I thought it was going to be to a library and all of a sudden my little Aquarius needed some things for her network and it totally worked out great. So that's the power of Aquarius. They got the three of wands here. I guarantee you they're, um, okay. Yeah. Barbie corrected me. Oh, Saturn returns second. What do you mean? Did I mess a date up? Um, I don't know if I messed a date up or not. So thank you for any help. Barbie it really follows the astrology. And so if, if there's something I've missed, she'll help us out. All right. We are looking at Aquarius. Clear. I see some of you guys have questions, and I'll get to those after I get through the zodiac here. So, all right. So the three of wands, you know, this is just when you get itchy. This is when you've got cabin fever, you're done with the quarantine, uh, yet the information here is really still, still being kind of alone. Um, the Aquarius, if you read our 2020 predictions for Aquarius, this is like totally it, the High Priestess card. This is actually spending quite a lot of time alone, understanding your connection to your higher power. So even though Aquarius, I just like bragged on them for being such great networkers and network so well and such good friends, you know, really this is a period where don't, don't miss it. You know what I mean? It's like you did the whole yoga practice and you get down to Shavasana and you just get up and go live your life. Like, no, don't miss it. Don't miss that last little nugget, that last piece of quiet time that centers you with God, uh, with your higher self, with the universe, right? Um, Shavasana, the ancient yogis taught that this is, uh, it's a practice for dying, okay? So don't miss that uh, opportunity to be in solidarity. Is that the right word? That's not really what I was going for, but being alone with yourself, with your higher self, okay? So you know what that means for you. Um, we also get the Justice card and the Two of Swords for our Aquarius. The Justice, we just went over really heavily with who was it, who got that card. Anyways, the Justice, it's like it's like a don't involve yourself too much because there's karma involved. So you don't want to attach yourself. You don't want to bond yourself to something you don't want to enable. You don't want to get in the way of somebody else's life lesson. Just let the karma police handle it. You've got a, a Two of Swords here. This is always a difficult decision. And a Two of Coins about money and a Three of Cups. So it looks like there's a lot of hands in the pot over here. Um, this could be with uh, your work. This could be with anything, really. It's like you've got to make a decision, and you're just not really uh, sure what to do with it. It's a lot of mixed energy. So just know that you're in an incubation period. So this is, again, this is uh, representative of the Empress. There's two singular divine goddess female cards, right? And they've got to spend the time alone to get clear in order to know what to do about this decision that you're facing or that you'll be facing soon. So it's a call, it's a request. It's a request for you to spend some alone time to get clear. And then here we go. Um, yeah, Aquarius, Ascended Master for you. Oh, it's your, it's your Saturn return. Wow, cool. Nice, Barbie. <laughs> Laura says her, her son was laughing hysterically as I was describing the zebras and the hooves. This is, yeah, this is like danger zone if you're only listening to part of my reading, right? Um, okay. Focus on your strengths, Apollo. 
Okay, for you Aquarius. For you to interpret too. You were born wise. You have the answers. This is just fun. Okay. So for Pisces, let's clear the deck. For Pisces, what do our Pisces friends need to hear? What do our Pisces friends need to know? Any uh, divine guidance we can offer our Pisces? They had a rough week reading last week. Let's see what we can get for them this week. Clear for Pisces. Five of Wands, Six of Wands, Four of Cups, and Nine of Wands. Okay, so, you know, this this Five of cu uh, Cups, this Five of Wands, you can see the energy here. Like, they're fighting, they're arguing, you know, they're not in harmony, they're not in alliance. Somebody has an unfair advantage. All right, so this is like, how, how can you work harder I mean, smarter, <laughs> how can you work smarter, not harder? You know, if you're facing a challenge or a challenging personality or even an inside challenge, just know that all of it is reflective of something that is an inside job that needs to happen internally. So facing your own truths, uh, finding your own sense of integrity in the situation, and then actually, you know, living it out. The Six of Wands is a victory. So. Even though it looks like things are kind of tough and weird and rough, like you have the opportunity to prevail. This is a win. This is going forward. Some of you might be getting a new car. Uh, some of you might be tracking your mileage. You know, you can make it very, very simple, but you can also make it very, very metaphorical, right? So a victory, a win, out, when there's been a stalemate and it's like finally there's a breakthrough and you get to move forward in a positive way. You've been kind of feeling puny about it. You've been kind of feeling overworked. So just like I was telling the last one, it's like, don't don't miss that opportunity for that pause because you're about to get in action again. So if you're feeling bored, like, thank God, like take advantage of that time where it's just slow and still because you're about to get back into action, Pisces. All right. And then it's like no rest for the weary, right? So our ascended master for our Pisces that they need to get to work with this weekend. And then if anybody has personal questions, this is a good time to put them in the comments so that I can see them and address some of your personal questions. So clearing for Pisces. Merlin, cool. That's really pretty. It's a very Beltane card to get. So there you go, Pisces, tapping into your healing energy, tapping into your Reiki, tapping into your um, your own natural innate ability to heal, to find your greatest sense of compassion for yourself, right? So whatever the hard situation is, just know that you're a healer. You know, put on your yoga, yoga beads and act like a healer. You know, don't act like the lower version, the young growing up version of yourself. Like act, like come in with your full healing energy you have the ability to shift everything okay so uh we are done with the zodiac portion of things so if you were just watching for the signs thank you so much i accept the virtual tip jar through venmo at tiffany dash harlick or uh, my paypal account which i believe i put in the link um, it was a little weird getting set up so i'll drop it in the comments if if you can pay it forward to somebody else in your life do an act of kindness uh, this is my kind of volunteer hour and again uh, for those of you who this really resonated with and you want to leave a tip, I so appreciate it. It does make a difference. Um, it makes it really feel good and worthwhile to me. So I, I appreciate that. And um, hopefully I posted links to the newsletter um, and to the forecast and podcaster live. So you guys can geek out on that some this weekend. And um, I guess the last thing I'll say before I do the personal readings is that I have decided to do an offer uh, for $200 a month that looks at several pieces of things personalized for you. So you would get a personalized tarot reading from me to you. Um, you would get a, a look at the new and full moons that are looking specifically how are they affecting you this month and what kind of rituals or ceremonies you might wanna bring into that or wishes and intentions. And then also just looking at the astrology and how it's affecting you personally. So there's the forecast, but then there's how the forecast affects your birth chart. 
Okay. And so uh, looking at all those things together, if that's interests you, just email me hello at wiseguysadvice.com and I'll get you taken care of. And I think I stalled long enough to get a, a couple of questions pulled in. So good. So Deborah was asking, Sag was about love and relationships, but if you're not involved and not planning to be, is there another message for those cards and the twin flame cards? You know, to me, um, it's a card of commitment, right? And often those two signify significant others. And because we're going into this Venus retrograde time, I would not be surprised if you if you started hearing from a past lover or somebody who acted like a twin flame. You know, the twin flame energy doesn't have to be um, your partner. It can be somebody that really evokes uh, some passionate response in you. You know, um, this could be a friend even, you know, somebody that you're really tight with, uh, somebody that you're very close, somebody that you would consider beloved. So I wouldn't I wouldn't deviate too far away from that, you know, but if you want, like, let's say sometimes they don't resonate um, and there's a reason for that. But sometimes they they don't seem like they resonate and then they do later. You know, so I wouldn't be surprised if you heard from somebody and then texted me and you're like, oh, that was right. That was crazy. So let's just see. Is there anything else we can get for Deborah specifically or any Sagittarius that felt like that did not flow for them? The idea is being committed. You know, the idea is being committed and doing the actions, doing what it takes to get the results you want for your commitment. The Empress. Okay, so <laughs> I just can't get out of it. That this, these are both like cards of love and fertility and ultimate compassion and ultimate happiness. You know, so just knowing that you're in an incubation period where things are going to get lighter and better and more joyful. You know, I just can't. I just can't get away from that message, uh, which is a good one. It's a positive one to have. Um, okay. Laura says that she separated from two of her three kids who are with their dad in another country. They're talking about moving closer together. Is it likely? So for Laura, is she, what does it look like if she goes forward with this move? What does it look like if she goes forward with this move? Ace of Wands, do it. Yes, go forward. Page of Swords, you know, you're probably getting some caution lights, but this is actually really good for you. Nine of Cups, you get your wish, so be careful what you wish for. That looks good, looks positive. And then Kim says she's a little concerned with the Venus retrograde because in Gemini rising and her boyfriend's a Gemini sun and he's got a ton of planets in Gemini. So for that, I would just recommend that you, you dive deep into all the offerings with Venus retrograde that we've provided. There's an article, there's a podcast, there's a survival kit, you know, and so I would just jump into that and just immerse yourself in the lessons of Venus retrograde. I wouldn't be concerned about it. I would just know that people are feeling pulled in two directions, that it's a little more light and flirty um, and just kind of let people have their sense of freedom um, to come and go. And uh, that, I think, is going to be important for people in relationships, you know, and, and not. But in general, it's like, OK, it's going to go over your son, over your sense of self. Right. So uh, I would encourage you to dive deep into those. We spend a lot of time with them. So I'll go ahead and close this uh, session for now. Hopefully you got some insight or some practical guidance that um, made a difference to you. And until next time, guys, namaste. Happy Beltane.